lab talks uh, here in Belgrade. It's the second session um, and it is one on our AI lab journey. And what journey was it actually for us? We are 13 different European organizations working together really in a close European network on developing European uh, projects, on creating also new projects and of course presenting um, many, many programs um, through the last um, three and a half years and it was really an exciting journey for all of us to collaborate and to work together. You will actually have the chance today to uh, yeah, get a quite detailed look into what we did, what we achieved together and also what exciting programs were realized. Um, even though we had to, of course, cope with some little uh, challenges like the pandemic, but nonetheless, uh, we had fantastic artists with working with us, um, and it was really an excitement. My name is Veronika Liebel, and I'm moderating uh, today's session also because um, at As Electronica, and um, I'm working s uh, since t 10 years now with As Electronica, we actually started these collaborations. We invited also the other organizations you will see on stage today uh, to join uh, this project. And As Electronica is, if you don't know um, the institution, um, a cultural organization which was founded more than 40 years um, in Linz, in Austria, along the Danube. And we're working since ever on this nexus of art, science, technology, um, and society. And mostly we do this really to bring artists and scientists together to also stimulate an exchange, uh, a relation, a working relationship between, between them and try to facilitate really an active discourse between arts and science. Because we are convinced really that artists are fantastic catalysts also of making processes which are maybe hidden or complex um, visible, making us also aware and understand of these processes, and of course also bring this to broad audiences. And this is exactly what we've also seen uh, in the European Artificial Intelligence Lab over the course of the last years, in particular in the work and also discussion on uh, what is artificial intelligence, where should it also develop to. This was a discourse with, which was held with many of our partners. We all know, of course, that the latest developments in particular in artificial intelligence are really, truly astonishing. And um, we also read every day in the newspaper that um, the advancements um, are driven by the increased economic and also scientific power which is invested in them. But artificial intelligence is really difficult to understand. And uh, many of our organizations really work also in educational activities, so we know from our daily work that it is quite challenging also to uh, make people aware of what artificial intelligence is and what, uh, how it works. Uh, so this is one, one big part, as well as trying to shed light on the very holistic effects and impacts of artificial intelligence um, and uh, in particular the ecological, also the political, the societal and the ethical questions associated with artificial intelligence. Again, we are not doing this alone. We are doing this in a fantastic collaboration with so many other partners all across Europe. And it is my huge pleasure actually to um, have them quite all represented today with us here in Belgrade. Um, we have already enjoyed the last two days here, um, also wrapping up the project and thinking about the future and maybe some uh, further projects. And I would say, let's actually speak, uh, or let's invite them to speak and give us uh, an um, insight into their work um, and also their collaboration with uh, artists and their audiences during the last years. First, I would actually already travel to France and um, to Lea, please come on stage. Welcome, Lea, yeah, please. You have here also a little picker. So please give us a bit of a background information on hexagon and this is the wrong presentation yes this one okay so 
My name is uh, Lea Desus. I'm working at Hexagon. So Hexagon is one uh, partner of the AILA project. Um, Hexagon is a theater based in Grenoble, France. Grenoble is, in, is a city, a small city in the Alps, so surrounded by the mountains. Um, and uh, the theater presents shows and performances on a stage, like a 500 seat uh, theater, presenting circus, dance, music, theater. Uh, and it has this uh, specificity to, um, uh, to have a research activity. Uh, because Grenoble, you have to know that Grenoble is a scientific city. Uh, it has one of the biggest uh, research centers in France called CEA. Um, and there is one center based in Grenoble gathering 6,000 researchers working especially on uh, nanotechnologies and new technologies in general. Um, but we have also, of course, other research centers and a huge university. And the director of Hexagon thought it would be um, pretty interesting to cross the disciplines and to make artists work together with scientists and see what comes out. Uh, and that's how Atelier Art Science um, uh, has been created in 2007. Uh, and is part of uh, Hexagon the Theatre. So Atelier Science is a common research platform between this CA research center and the theater. And we led more than 50 art and science residencies. So that's our core mission uh, at Atelier Science. So what is a residency? It's uh, when you bring together uh, scientists and uh, artists together for a period from some, it goes from months to some years um, until it, uh, it leads to an outcome. It can be very different. It can be uh, when it's a successful a performance on the stage of Hexagon, but it can, can be also a smaller performance or just an art installation uh, or a video installation. Uh, so we are mostly working with artists from the performing arts. Um, but what is also Hexagon doing in Atelier Science is a biennale, an art and science biennale that we call Experimenta. Um, so it's every two years. Last edition was in 2020. Um, and it has three components. So one component is the shows. So during 10 days, we are uh, presenting art and science show on the stage of the Hexagon, but also on the stage of uh, theaters that are partners of the event. There is one component which is the exhibition. So we showed about like 34 uh, artworks uh, during three days. Um, and so it's artworks that are results of collaboration between artists and scientists uh, with the specificity that we are asking the artist to be uh, present during the whole fair. It's a way to be in touch directly with the audience, but also with professionals, and to work about this unusual collaboration. So most of the time, we ask also to the uh, researcher to be alongside the artists. And we, the third component is the forum, so a series of roundtables um, on topics that are raised by uh, the artworks that we have at the exhibition. So that's why we always invite an artist uh, to each round table. So the idea is really to create bridges between, between those three components. Um, so that's what, that was for Hexagon. Ah, oh, I can, I have the, yes. So we, inside the, so we are very happy to be here, uh, to be involved in this uh, ILA project because it's a topic that uh, artists uh, are dealing with since a few years now. Uh, less in the performing arts than in visual arts, but still we have some. And um, we decided to uh, set up uh, a residency with Rocio Berangui. It's a Spanish choreographer and writer based in France. And uh, she made several shows already um, based on AI and worked with several scientists on this topic, so we thought she would be very relevant for this one. And she came with this project called G5, 
Um, it's a dialogue between species that have to negotiate their coexistence on Earth, so territories, resources, and she made it uh, as if it was a, a live television debate um, and where all the species had to communicate uh, together and together. So it was mineral, vegetal, um, animal, human and machine. And for them to be able to understand each other, she wanted to use AI as a tool, as a translation bridge between all those different signals from each species with the difficulty of how do you find the right signal to be understood by all the others and how do you avoid to be too much anthropocentric. So what was quite interesting in this residency is that she worked of course with um, uh, scientific and AI, but she associated also anthropologist, philosopher, biologist, uh, geophysicist, astrophysicist, so it was what I call a complete residency because it was not only um, hard uh, science but also and technology, but also humanities. So it ended up on the stage of Hexagon, so far it's, it's very successful, uh, but also installations at Experimenta and a conference um, uh, during the forum of uh, Experimenta. And um, she also had like some, uh, uh, she intervened in other venues of the project. Um, so this was for one of our main projects, but of course what is also important in, um, for us and what brings us the project, the ILA project, is all those potential partnerships because uh, we are 14 partners, 13 partners, and uh, it's, ve it's very important to uh, let the artists circulate between our venues. So Experimenta was for us the opportunity to welcome the artists uh, supported by our partners. So we, sh and we showed at Experimenta, so uh, among the 30 uh, artworks, we had 10 coming from our partners uh, and presented uh, during the whole week uh, at the exhibition, but also participating at the conferences. Um, we made other activities because what is also very important in the project is how do we um, um, allow uh, different audiences to have access to the to this topic, and uh, that's what I call here outreach activities. It means how the theater we worked with scholars, universities, uh, elders association. Um, to give them access to these artists dealing with AI and bring also the, the debate and those questions to a broader audience. Um, so we had another roundtables, performances, uh, and training programs uh, and workshops. So um, it was also how to allow artists to have um, a broader access to the, uh, to this technology. So we organized like sessions of three days where uh, uh, scientists and uh, artists could debate and discuss and where the scientists really were here to, for the transmission of their knowledge. So I don't know if I go further into this. Maybe a sentence to wrap up. <laughs> um, but what, what we, uh, so we learned a lot, but what also uh, uh, this AILA project allows us is a project that will continue beyond this project because we um, made some partnerships uh, with institutions that want to continue to work on this topic with us. So we will continue to work on this topic and, I w and we will, I hope, continue to work with some of the partners even if the project ends very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Leah. <laughs> We actually had the pleasure back uh, at the beginning of 2020 to visit Grenoble uh, when they did the festival and the way the mediation really worked, also the way they engaged artists in direct mediation of the topics and of course uh, the audience in uh, discussions was really fantastic and uh, again this is really a strong, strong focus of all our work also of the next presenter of the Onassis Cultural Center and Heracles, please come on stage.
welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it works. So and you have to point the heat. Right. So I'm uh, Heracles Papathodorou. I am coordinator of digital and innovation. And um, that's ultra, also interesting because we currently are in um, uh, what is essentially a museum of innovation. It's not only about technology. Uh, and uh, we also tend to forget that uh, the relationship between art and science is not a new thing um, uh, ever since the concept of a gallery was conceived. It was also, technology was always displayed in the context of art uh, because art has uh, this unique opportunity to speak about things and to speak about things that matter, uh, which are how we live. Uh, which is how we govern uh, and how we go through our daily lives. And this is what we also try to do at the Onassis Foundation uh, and at Onassis Teigi. Onassis Teigi is the venue of the Onassis Foundation in Athens, Greece. Uh, we uh, used to focus on stage performances, but of course uh, contemporary culture and what uh, we care about, which is how our lives uh, are shaped uh, has been on, on our focus. I'm not sure if, the okay, the video here plays. So the um, goal of Onassis Foundation is to, to speak about those things that matter. Uh, and uh, specifically in the context of uh, AI lab, uh, what we wanted to unpack is those uh, intricate forces between uh, uh, the shaping of those technologies. And that also connects to our mission, which is speaking about culture uh, and speaking about education. And uh, through uh, this network, we had this unique opportunity to have a, a holistic approach and start from uh, the educational activities go through uh, working with artists through residency programs to uh, develop new works and eventually present those kind of works uh, to the greater audience. Um, one of these examples, and I'll quickly go through uh, and focus a little bit more on the public programs were the archives in transit. Uh, this was a, a, an educational program for schools and educators as disseminators. Uh, that talks uh, and, uh, about AI and breaks it down to its basics, which is databases, discriminators, which is decisions and uh, outlooks on these datasets, and eventually outcomes, which we use to uh, interpret the world. Uh, and we started with archival material from uh, the Onassis Library, which is a humanistic library dating to uh, the first uh, Greek books, um, and the Kavaf archive and other open archives, and therefore uh, uh, we created essentially a toolkit um, that uh, guides educators uh, on how to use uh, uh, archival material for creative purposes how to deal with content licenses, what to use, and how to further uh, enable others to reuse their output, um, and uh, eventually uh, unpack those technologies that consist of AI. And uh, through the residences, I'll just focus on two walks. Uh, the, the one by Frederick de Wilde, which talks about um, satellites orbiting the Earth, uh, searching for rare materials, and how these rare materials are eventually used uh, in uh, the devices we carry in our everyday lives. And the other one uh, by Stephanie Hanke and Marek Tusinski, which, uh, which talks about and uh, maps a uh, hundred different technologies that are used to interpret and study eventually the human body through AI during the times of the pandemic. And uh, I'll put a quick video right after this. Uh, we, uh, th this is UNAI is the festival uh, that we had the chance to do this very summer. Uh, let's say at the end of the pandemic when people were again allowed and it was possible to do uh, public events outside. Uh, it consists of a physical exhibition of 25 works in a public space in Athens, uh, which is called Pedio Tuarios. 
um, and a series of online discursive events, which, uh, of course, you can uh, also see online right now. Not sure this should happen, but I'll quickly skip through. Um, could we could we play the video here? Ο αλγόριθμος ξέρει τα μυστικά σου. Πού είναι ο εξαφανισμένος ρινόκυρος του βορρά; Έλα στο πεδίο του Άρεος. Στην έκθεση You and AI. 24 Ιουνίου στον τεχνητά φυσικό χώρο του πάρκου μια παραγωγή της στέγης του Ιδρύματος Ωνάση Ο αλγόριθμος ξέρει τα μυστικά σου που είναι ο εξαφανισμένος ρινόκυρος του βορρά Thankfully technology always manages to break on its own uh, but we always need artists to further break it down uh, and this is this is particularly important because um, uh, such technologies that we carry every day in our lives tend to be invisible. And that was the, uh, the core message of the exhibition, that AI is not something that will come in the future. It's something that is already here. Uh, and uh, we carry interfaces that speak with AI in our pockets, and it governs how we walk in the city, how we experience the public space, how we experience democracy, and eventually how we decide to do things. Uh, and all these works in the exhibition try to unpack these realities uh, in several ways. The one was about how we see AI. The second one is about how AI sees us, and of course, speaking uh, in more detail about surveillance. And the third uh, part of the exhibition was about how artificial intelligence can substitute the uh, natural environment or augment it in different ways. Um, and very quickly, I'll go through some highlight works, perhaps, from the exhibition. Uh, of course, you, you can also see some of the discursive programs here. So uh, at the very beginning of the exhibition, uh, we uh, started asking the the audience to uh, dream about, because it was quite of a dreamy environment to be in, a, in an exhibition after so many months, really. Um, and uh, that is also the part uh, that breaks down AI with a very known work from uh, Mousson Zeraviv uh, into databases, discriminators specifically, because uh, the methodology for phrenology, which this uh, work discusses, uh, was widely used to discriminate in the dark history of Europe. Um, and um, the opportunity of the park was that we were able to take some works out of their original white book context and put them right into nature, which eventually they, they speak for. Um, A great uh, challenge was, uh, again, how to uh, discuss with the audience that already uh, visits the park and actually uh, makes use of the park and try not uh, to, uh, to, to come uh, against uh, the, the people that are already in the park. And uh, that, uh, in some cases, meant that we had people walking on the exhibits themselves, which uh, was designed as such. This particular one uh, talks about uh, predictive policing, uh, how algorithms eventually, if, even if we don't see them from ground level, govern our lives from afar. Another work, uh, a live one, about uh, uh, data in the city and how they can be created into poetic interpretations of everyday life. And of course, uh, when speaking about the past, it is often interesting to imagine how it can be interpreted in different ways. Uh, so in this uh, work by Edgar Kraft, we have uh, the hallucinations of uh, a, gener a generative uh, AI system uh, reinterpreting uh, figures from ancient cultures. 
or rethinking aquatic creatures in, inside the aquatic areas of the park? Maybe can you comment? Yes. And uh, overall, um, you can still uh, see several of the works online. Uh, there is still an ongoing part of the exhibition online with several works design as such. And of course, the documentary and uh, documentation of the entire exhibition. Thanks so much. Thank you. Definitely really an outstanding example of also expanding um, cultural activities, expanding also uh, exhibitions beyond um, the classical halls of museums and galleries, um, which is definitely one of the big objectives also of the European Artificial Intelligence Lab, uh, which is co-funded really also by the uh, Creative Europe program of the European Commission, and which has a specific objective also of audience development, so really trying to reach uh, audiences beyond um, the usual um, halls um, and, of course, scope and reaches of cultural organizations. And um, going into public spaces is, of course, a fantastic way to do so. Um, also, a way which actually is done by the next presenter, not necessarily in a park, more in the form uh, or in front of a castle <laughs> in Denmark. I would actually ask our colleagues from Culture Yard to come on. And please give us some insights into your programs. I will, I will. Oh, do we have a, oh yeah. Yeah, I need to f find out. Well, uh, my name is Barbara. I'm um, I'm from Denmark, from we, where we have a, a, a local culture center called the Culture Yard. Um, buildings renewed with new architecture around it, and then there's another old building where we have another different sorts of activities, and then behind us we also have some huge halls. I was talking about, <laughs> and on the other side, you, you see Sweden. We're only four kilometers from from Sweden, and then we also have the big halls where we have ex been experimenting actually with uh, some of these things um, within the AI lab project. Um, well, kind of project. Um, it, for us, it's 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 quite obvious because. Uh, we work with a lot of daily activities like concerts, uh, children's performances, and um, art classes for children, etc., etc. But we also have this corner of our activities where we go deeply into art and progress, curiosity, um, looking out widely in in the world, and 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 here we we tend to to focus of the field of art and technology and science, and this project then even gives us a chance to go even deeper into the specific uh, area of of uh, artificial intelligence, and for us who are working. Uh, with a certain focus on uh, stage performance. This is, has been really exciting, I must say. Um, I'll go a little further. This is uh, the more local activities you see here. We have, um, for 10 years, just as long time as, as we existed as a culture center, we had worked with a, a, a brand we call Click, which is, has been for 10 years a festival international festival in, in the field of art, science, and technology, but it's also a brand for uh, activities and uh, workshops stuff during the year. And it has indeed become even more now because the festival format uh, changed because of the COVID situation. But in the framework of, of CLICK, we had the opportunity to, to get into these uh, 
really exciting productions uh, um, with uh, connected to AI, both to to try to investigate what is AI, what can it be used for within the the art field, and especially within um, the framework of performing arts in in, in Denmark. Um, but but also to to change the whole setup of the of 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 the art scene to to try to allow experiments to to grow to to be able to work together in in, in new ways and uh, to let young artists exper make experiments with with um, scientists uh, I will go a little further here we have uh, some young artists uh, making making a ai art piece uh, with the ai inside these uh, lights reacting uh, on on the humans moving around them in a quite poetic way and from talk sessions and, and this is from actually a seminar where now that we were earlier talking about um, audiences also in this case it also gave us a chance not only to, to, to work with the local audience and the kids but also to work to see the whole uh, performing arts scene as a sort of small audience we, we like to, to, to influence. With, with seminars and experiments. Oh, what have we here? This is actually an AI installation. You can't see it. It looks like a doctor's place in the 50s, but, uh, but you can have an AI um, consultation here. Um, So this is uh, from um, one example of um, an artwork where we were actually able to have a, an open call where we could uh, put together some uh, different scientists working with um, AI technologies and some performing artists. And we had time to, to let them collaborate and, and create art pieces and we could give them room and we could let them perform at our festival and we could tour them. So this was a, a great opportunity to, to them to work in a new way. And, and this piece is called uh, Memory Mechanics and uses an AI to collect memories from various target groups and then it's performed in an installation where you can also go and, and inter interact with these various memories. Um, I'll run through all this. This is from the installation also. Um, I think time is running, right? So I better, yeah. I just want to show you a few, yeah. This is also, this is from a larger scale uh, production that we worked on for three years in this whole project period, trying to make one show both um, using and telling in this, inside the story about the role of an AI, which was really difficult. It was both difficult to this is actually a live stage performance where the AI plays an active role and it, yeah, well, I can't in, in short sentences tell you how complicated it was to, to have this <laughs> AI alive on, on the stage, but super fun. Um, yeah, I guess I should stop, right? Thank you. Yeah, well. Thank you, please <laughs> give it <laughs> applause. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really strongly recommend actually looking also into the video documentations of the performance program did by Carl Giard. Um, I think it's an outstanding example and what they did during the last editions as well, how 
yeah, how performances can, of course, um, be also uh, mixed with using technologies and also how um, performances are maybe pushing a bit our understanding of technologies and how we interact with technologies. This is definitely something uh, which I was lucky enough to discover personally in uh, Helsingor, but uh, it is for sure also something um, you will see within the documentations. I think that's the beauty, to be honest, also of such a consortium working with so many partners where you have uh, partners which are focused very much on performance programs. We have a couple of also partners who focused on theatre programs, but of course also many who, um, like us Electronica, focused a lot on exhibitions and mediation programs. And one of these partners is Laboral, um, and I would ask Patricia to come on stage from the very last row. Back. Super. Welcome. Thank you so much. The stage Hi. is yours. <laughs> uh, thanks, Veronica, and thanks everyone for being here tonight, uh, today. Uh, my name is Patricia Villanueva, and I come from Laboral, an art center in the north of Spain. Yeah, that's Laboral. It's a huge building. It's actually the biggest building in Spain. Yeah, that's the, that's the main complex. It was built in the 50s during dictatorship and it was uh, resignified through culture. Laboral, the art center, is just one part of the whole building. Uh, we also have we also have a music school, drama school, university, and also we have a technology part because the project is a strategy of the government of Asturias uh, to have a future in a post-industrial uh, region and trying to work with technology, innovation, and creativity. So this is the art center. As you can see, we are in a huge industrial space. And uh, when we started with AI Lab, uh, we work also on exhibitions and mediation programs uh, mainly. We decided that the first cycle of activities would be very much focused on basic concepts around artificial intelligence. And this was also because Laboral is in a very small region. We're not in Madrid or Barcelona. We realized that most of the people would not really know what artificial intelligence implied, even if it was on the newspapers or TV programs. So our main goal was uh, to break down the walls and the myths around artificial intelligence. So I'm going to show you some images of the exhibitions. And this was addressed to the general public. You can check on uh, our YouTube channel all the documentation and interviews with the curators if you want to go deeper into the topic. But also we were very much interested in to get into more audiences like school students. So we had like this uh, visit workshop program during the whole exhibition that dealt with the concepts uh, in guided visit, but also in practical activities. Also, we try to reach the communities around Laboral, and we do it through this format, this winter lab that we host almost every year. And there we have theoretical and practical activities, in this case, around artificial intelligence and art. Here, we invite artists, scientists, uh, technologists, uh, activists, citizens in general, and we put them uh, to dialogue. Uh, to get a more critical and, and creative point of view about technology and its impacts. So these are some of the, of the workshops. I'm not going to stop into them. These were the meetings. And um, the second exhibition, the second cycle for AI Lab, we focus into a much more um, a specific topic which is Art, Artificial Intelligence, and Neuroscience. This title, When the Butterflies of the Soul Flutter Their Wings, comes from scientific Ramon y Cajal, Spanish scientific who studied the brain, and he thought, well, he said that the, the neurons were the most beautiful souls in the world, 
the butterflies of the soul, and these neurons will help us to understand the, the mysteries of the brain. So this was uh, our, our inspiring uh, sentence to, to start thinking about the exhibition. The main idea was to explore the connections between the um, artificial intelligence and the human intelligence and how scientists were working and also artists to explore uh, those, two, those two topics. Again, some pictures of the exhibition. Uh, you can also find documentation. Uh, but then, and I'm gonna say the word COVID came and to, to keep engaged with our audiences, especially schools, we had to move into the virtual, but we decided to move also the exhibition, which was a bit hard, because as you may imagine, artworks cannot be experienced in the same way through the website. Um, but we made this effort together with the artists and the curators, and for about six months, we were having virtual uh, exhibitions, uh, virtual uh, guided tours with the school, which was the only way in we could reach them uh, to, to give them the opportunity and to us still have the contact with them. Again, we repeat the Winter Lab. In this case, everything was virtual and uh, we collaborate uh, with different groups of the university uh, from the scientific point of view. And in the end, well, this is all perfectly documented as this was already in restriction times. And the last activity, we decided to go into a more uh, uh, general topic. Asturias is a very political region, and we knew that dealing with neuroscience was something um, a bit difficult for the general public. So we decided uh, to focus the last activity into uh, democracy and artificial intelligence, which was something that really raised the interest of the, of the communities around Laboral very, very fast. And it also, um, it gave us a chance to balance a bit, uh, on the one hand, the more uh, complex or topics that open fields to everyone, to scientists and to artists, such as the neuroscience and artificial intelligence, and topics that also help us to keep connected to the, to the communities that we have around the Arts Center. Thank you. Thank you. So again, I think one of the recurring themes you definitely hear and you will also hear until the very end is of course how to make AI accessible and mediate the stories um, and also the scientific progress and scientific developments behind. Um, in the case of Laboral, they really developed a fantastic online and virtual way to mediate this. Uh, this is part of our daily job also to make, even in times of COVID, even in times when um, students and schools can't access our um, halls, our cultural venues, um, and uh, invite them and try to um, yeah, give them an understanding of our uh, work and the scientific uh, and technological advance advancements. Um, this is precisely also what is actually done by our host organization, um, by CPN, and I actually ask Peter to come on stage. Thank you so much again for hosting us, uh, for feeling us so welcome here in Belgrade, and uh, we are loving to come back every single time, uh, also because you really do a fantastic program, and we see this very much here today also within the exhibition. Please. Thank you. Uh, okay, so the Center for the Promotion of Science is a part of this wonderful and big program, but unlike the other partners, we are not a cultural institution. Institution don't do, uh, art is aren't, are, isn't our primary uh, thing we do, so we do science communication. This is our main part, and our focus is uh, communicating specific scientific topics to the general public, communicating with uh, institutions, academic institutions, even industry. And to all this, through these projects, we added artists and artists as another uh, layer. So I'm just gonna quickly go over this. So during this, yes, as Veronica said, uh, we met in Belgrade to start off this project uh, at the end of 2018, so this was one of the, so you might, 
see some familiar faces from these photos around. And so from the, for the start uh, of this project, uh, we started on a Serbian-wide, let's say, a tour of promoting the project, what our vision for it was, and trying to get the message across to as many of the uh, art schools around Serbia, uh, also scientific stage. So here you can see some photos of when we visited the Academy of Arts in Novi Sad and some independent cultural uh, places around Serbia and Belgrade. So the beginning of the project was focused on securing a good network of collaborators for the next three years on the local scene. And one of a, a great activities that we organized and that proved now after some two years a very successful one was organizing this We Inspire You tour. So we took a whole bus, 35 people from across, from starting from the very top, from uh, representatives of the Ministry of Culture, Ministry of Science, uh, then a lot of artists, a lot of people involved in teaching, academics, also representatives of industry are some and a lot of journalists also because this is a sort of a new topic here and it wasn't covered in depth so we thought it was nice to work with people and to have around us a good group of collaborators to follow this so yes so this was a two day uh, a four day tour to Linz to Ars Electronica when we were hosted by Veronica and her colleagues, and also to Ljubljana, to Kapelica, which is another partner of this project. Unfortunately, they're not with us today, but because they're organizing their own event yes, in Brussels. Brussels. Yeah. Yes, so this is so, but the main uh, focus of our activities is the annual uh, art, and, art plus science program of the center. So this started in 2016 and it's been going on till now and now you're in the space of the exhibition of the sixth edition of this uh, program and the last three uh, programs, manifestations, I don't know how to call them, uh, were under the AI lab project. So we started with art plus neuroscience the Art Plus Science Lab last year and the AI Realities exhibition uh, this year. So yes, so maybe two, yes, yeah, so this is the neuroscience. Uh, the exhibition last year was a, a really <laughs> different program than all of them because it was in 2020 and of course COVID was here, but we had the luck to have this uh, September exhibition and to, be, to manage to have a, a physical exhibition in uh, Belgrade. And also we were part of uh, the Euroscience Open Forum in Trieste. So part of the exhibition was exhibited there also. So actually in this pandemic time we had two physical exhibitions, but we also have, uh, because we didn't know how this was going to happen, we had an online uh, also virtual exhibition, so a replica of this space in Katza Magazine, Magazine, and it's still in Mozilla Hubs, which we will so, <laughs> use for Ars Electronica. So yes, uh, this, this Euroscience Open Forum is a very important, it's a bilateral um, biennial uh, conference on science, science communication, very important one, and the city that hosts it, so Trieste in 2020, gets this prestigious title of the European uh, capital of science. We will, so yeah, and then we come to the third part. This is this year's ongoing exhibition. So maybe two, three. And yes, and after these uh, three last events, so we have this sort of a structure that works well with for us and that we got a lot. So we have, uh, the national selection. So the, the uh, project, the AI Lab project, has four residency 
calls uh, led by Ars Electronica and uh, with different scientific um, institutions were in very important ones. So this, uh, yeah, yeah, so we had in these two projects from CERN to, uh, yes, very, very prestigious and very nice ones. So we, we try to promote these on a national level, these calls, and to encourage local artists to apply for these. Uh, the center also provides them help if they need because our uh, the schooling here doesn't really provide artists with uh, knowledge of uh, budgeting their making these proposals so we also try to help with them so they apply to these uh, global calls and then we make a national local selection from these artists uh, then another uh, way of coming to these productions of the center, how we engage local artists, scientists, these trends, is this Art Plus Science Plus CPN program or selection, which was started in 2019. Uh, so yeah, we'll maybe go. Then we have the National uh, Plus selection, uh, which we take um, local artists who are maybe more familiar in a global context and try to bring them and present them here and maybe, yeah, even contextualize them in the art and science category. And of course, we have the air lab selection. So around you, you see a lot of uh, works that we saw at uh, partner festivals, and many of them were developed by uh, some of the partner institutions. So this is the air lab selection, and of course, the most very important part of our program are the parallel events, the talks, the discussions, the workshops, um, and conferences like this when we try to go deeper. So we cover everything, so from school children to high school children to uh, students at art academies, at technical universities. So yes, this is. So okay, so for this national selection, um, we had the first winner, Jasna Jovicevic, uh, in 2019, 2020, Kristina Tica, and we try to match them, so they apply with their art projects, and we try to match them, uh, and we managed to do this very successfully, uh, with um, scientific institutions, so either specific scientists who can help in their work, or for the last couple of projects, we even had residences at like laboratories or even some projects dealing in specific topics. So Jasne Vichovic did her uh, piece at the uh, electrical uh, School of Electrical Engineering, University of Belgrade. Kristina Tica did it with the Mathematical Institute of the Serbian Academy. And this is the this year's winner is Marko Milic, and you will have as soon as we finish our presentations a chance to see the performance uh, Binema in the space, so I, yeah, so maybe, uh, today. and yes, this Art Plus Science Plus CPN selection is, um, I don't know, it's very dear to me, uh, so a colleague of mine, uh, Boyan, who is also in the audience, um, and I um, tried to uh, organize this, so this started in 2019, and aside from this different artist-led one, we try here to uh, get a diverse group of artists, scientists, or a uh, broader spectrum of interested people in a specific topic, try to organize uh, a number of workshops, talks, and to get them to know each other better, to try start collaborating, and to present projects that then we select. We have juries also and uh, produce them. So for this first year, we produced uh, three different um, works dealing with uh, neuroscience. I in 2020, uh, we also, we had two uh, more works that were produced and presented at our 2020 festival. Uh, the first AI VI is uh, a very interested, it's a pervasive uh, game, a mobile app uh, that takes you on a walk through the center of Belgrade 
and at different locations opens up some interesting and very important topics surrounding AI. And this is done by a very uh, good and strong team of uh, five artists and scientists and uh, yes and of course yeah so this year we also had two different so from this project we have from this selection we had seven works that were produced within this uh, AI lab project and the three national winners so ten ten pieces were produced here and here at the end you can see some photos from different workshops for different generation of kids and at the end just to mention our art and science platform so we changed our annual sites for the, that followed our manifestations to a more general platform and we are starting work on it and this will be our focus at the end of the year so yeah I think we can finish there Thank you. Thank you again. Um, definitely a big invitation also to explore the exhibition, all the projects, or many of the projects you presented today are part of where we are currently. So uh, yeah, um, encourage you to, to have a look. Um, and again, thanks for hosting us, um, as hosting all the partners. Some are missing, uh, also because we could not fit everyone, otherwise we would keep you probably until midnight, but uh, there are many other uh, partners also part of this network, in particular uh, WAG uh, from Amsterdam, Le Lieu Unique also from France, then we have Kapelica from Slovenia, which was already mentioned, uh, and also Science Gallery Dublin, and many, many other scientific partners, because one thing is really important to mention, we don't do this alone as culture organizations. We really heavily rely actually on the collaborations with international scientific institutions and, of course, the national ones. Um, and the model CPN is following is a fantastic one to also pair artists really specifically for the creation with national scientific institutions. We also do this in the context of the residency to open up the doors also of uh, AI research um, uh, and technology organizations for artists, let them engage with the scientists directly and let them also discuss and um, get into fights maybe or um, um, exchange uh, ideas on the developments of AI together. Um, this is also something we do, and we, uh, in this context, uh, is Christina, uh, a colleague from Ars Electronica, who will actually jump into the details of what we did um, and still do at Ars Electronica. Thank you very much, Veronica. Um, I'm super delighted to be here today um, with all of our partners discussing everything that we've all together been doing uh, within the framework of the AI lab for the past uh, almost four years by now. Um, so I'm very happy to be here now to uh, talk a little bit more about what Ars Electronica has actually been doing in the context of the European Artificial Intelligence Lab. So uh, Veronica in the beginning briefly introduced us already uh, so that you also have an image in your mind. Uh, this is our home base, the Ars Electronica Center, that exists since the mid-1990s. And uh, as mentioned, we're a platform at the nexus of art science, uh, not, sorry, sorry, art society and technology since 1979. Uh, through the Ars Electronica Festival that has been bringing together artists, scientists, researchers, uh, activists, and really the general public to discuss the implications of technology on our daily lives, uh, how it's affecting us, how it's affecting our environments, uh, and how are we dealing with those technologies and reflecting them. Um, the Ars Electronica does this uh, through quite a few different uh, departments. The Ars Electronica Center uh, is, as I said, our home base that is focused on uh, mediating art and technology to uh, especially also the younger generations, to schools, uh, school children, teachers, uh, but also 
uh, the general public and families who are interested in diving into the topic of technology. The Ars Electronica uh, Festival every year brings together a critical mass of artists and researchers and the general public uh, discussing all of these topics. And um, we also have the Ars Electronica Future Lab, our R&D lab, uh, and the U19 Create Your World Festival that brings all of these topics into really uh, the hands and into the area of the youngest generation from uh, zero to 19 who are already also working with technologies and reflecting on them. Um, and these are also kind of the, the uh, parts of Ars Electronica where the uh, artificial intelligence lab um, showed up mostly and where really a lot of our programs and formats uh, came together. Um, and I think the important thing about Ars Electronica is that we never look at technology as a vacuum, but it's really always how do we develop it, how do we use it, um, and how are we planning to use it maybe also in more empathic and sustainable ways in the future. Um, and I would say that's really also what's been driving uh, how we have been uh, curating and developing the programs within uh, the European Artificial Intelligence Lab. So uh, there we were, of course, reflecting really on how uh, AI is currently used in governance, in public spaces, in civil society, in our work environments, uh, in our daily lives, through the devices that we are using. Um, but of course, also, we were focusing very much on the uh, idea to demystify AI. So to talk with our audiences, with the general public about the fact uh, that it's not something that is kind of uh, working on its own and, and being uh, like, like an entity that is not governed by us humans. So we are the ones uh, programming AI, we are the ones uh, designing it, so we also have the re responsibility to reflect on how we use it and how we want to apply it. Uh, and that's really what we've been reflecting on um, in the context of the AI lab through capacity building programs, uh, through workshops, through exhibitions, through residencies, conferences and lectures. Um, and many of our partners have already discussed uh, their own residencies today uh, and they are also really one of the hard pieces of the AI lab um, in Ars Electronica's own programs. So we were really lucky as Veronica was also mentioning just uh, to work together with fantastic institutions. Uh, the Muntref Centro de Arte y Ciencia uh, and the Laboratorio de Neuro Neurociencia, so of Neuroscience of the University Torcato di Tella in Buenos Aires. That's quite a, a mouthful. Um, the Edinburgh Futures Institute and specifically the Experiential AI Cluster there. Uh, the Leiden Observatory that is uh, focusing kind of on the view outside um, towards the skies and in very much the same vein, uh, the SETI Institute based uh, in California in the US who are kind of exploring the possibility of extraterrestrial life. So the residencies that we hosted uh, together with the scientists of these fantastic institutions and also with uh, the Ars Electronica Future Lab um, where we invited artists through open calls to participate, uh, were really guided also by the research topics of these institutions. Um, so uh, the artists had the opportunity to, uh, some of them in person, because the residency happened before COVID, some of them through online uh, participation, work with the scientists and develop a number of uh, fantastic pieces that were all shown this year at the Ars Electronica Festival. So Anna Riddler and Caroline Sinders presented Cypress Trees, a beginning where they uh, are still in the process of creating a data set working with Cypress Trees native to Louisiana in an area that is being hugely affected by uh, the surrounding oil industries and industries um, and where the trees are currently in uh, the process of becoming extinct. So they are now in this project, Cypress Trees, a beginning creating a data set of these trees, um, archiving them and also uh, referencing the fact that while the trees themselves might not be in our physical world soon, there will still be uh, an archive and a data set, a massive one of these trees um, in digital version. 
that can maybe even in the future be used to, uh, with um, general generative adversarial networks to create new trees. So they are really questioning uh, the idea of the archives we are creating, the data sets that we are creating, um, and also how those relate to the physical representation um, in the real world. Uh, then we have uh, Sarah Petkus and Mark Koch, who have developed together with Leiden Observatory um, the piece Moon Rabbit, and there they are training um, a battery of AI children to read the stars. So. Um, they've been training uh, neural networks in different ways, in, with different approaches, to um, find shapes in the constellations in the sky. And uh, their work is really a beautiful example of how we are training AI neural networks, how we are affecting the training process. Um, they very specifically also reflect on the fact that they used very different approaches. Um, Sarah, a very erratic uh, one uh, and creative one, and Mark, who is uh, the, the technical person and researcher in, the re in, in this pairing, um, a very strict and principled one. And they uh, were kind of trying to find out how will this affect the neural network. So we can also see uh, the kind of impact we have on the design of the networks. Um, and then we have also The Wandering Mind uh, by Gershon Dublon and Shin Liu, who have created a uh, AI-driven performance network um, that they have fed with thousands of sounds, and they are exploring the idea of uh, meditative soundscapes and environments that can uh, get people to meditate and to sleep. Um, and we have the Codex Virtualis project by Interspecifics, a collective uh, based mostly in Mexico, uh, but also across Europe and other parts of the world, who have uh, created an archive of potential extraterrestrial beings that don't exist uh, through data sets that they received, um, among others, from the SETI Institute. Uh, so they are exploring the uh, speculative scenario of creating organisms uh, that don't exist through using AI models. Um, and I think that all of these works really show uh, this kind of unpeeling of AI through different uh, technologies that we really focus on in the whole European Artificial Intelligence Lab. So all of the works really get us thinking about how the technology works, and, uh, but they do it in a very empathic way and in a way uh, that's also approachable for a general audience to really start understanding maybe how we create data sets, uh, how computer vision works by looking at, at uh, an entity that's looking at the night sky and seeing some shapes that aren't even there. Um, so I think that's something that all of the residencies really bring together. Um, jumping into another part of our program, uh, the Ars Electronica Journeys, so that is something that we took on in the past year as the pandemic kicked off and we started thinking about how can we bring in our artists into the Ars Electronica Festival to reflect on their artistic practice, to give us an insight into their work. And so we came to um, kind of the conclusion to work with them on filmic pieces where they don't necessarily introduce a specific artwork, but they really talk about uh, their practice. And uh, we have, over the past two years, within the framework of the European Artificial Intelligence Lab, commissioned um, 22 artists who were all sharing through films from four minutes to 30 minutes how they are working with AI technologies, um, how they are using uh, AI models in their own artistic practice, but also getting us thinking about some of the critical questions that we should be asking ourselves. Um, so these are all, these films, these 22 pieces can all be viewed online. So they are uh, basically in a media take available for everybody to watch at any point, um, which we of course encourage you to do. Uh, and they really much like the, the image you can see here um, from how to strand astronauts on the moon. This is a really fantastic example of a journey where the two artists, Halsey Burgund and Francesca Panetta, they collaborated uh, um, together to really understand how deepfake technology works. So 
Um, they both, before they started working on uh, their work in event of moon disaster, didn't really know much about this technology but wanted to explore it. So they created a fictional scenario in which uh, the moon landing in 1969 had actually gone wrong and they used a speech by Richard Nixon that he never actually gave um, to have an actor deliver it and then um, made a deep fake so that it looked like Richard Nixon was giving a, speak, uh, speak, a, a speech about the failed moon landing. And through this really showing how uh, general um, adversarial networks are working, how deep fake technology is working and also creating a massive online archive around this. And these th things they all explore in their journey. And this is really what the journeys are doing, showing us uh, through the, the voices of the artists how they are using AI technologies. One last sentence, okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, because I need to wrap up. I will wrap up the rest of what I wanted to talk about in one sentence. Um, we explored within the AI lab also uh, a lot of conference programs with fantastic researchers and artists. Um, we had uh, the very great pleasure of working with all of our wonderful partners over the last two years um, through an online program, the Ars Electronica Gardens, where many, many of the partners here in the network hosted um, programs focused on AI, both in online, in hybrid, and in physical form that were part of the Ars Electronica Festival. And of course, we also explored everything that we've been discussing over the past one and a half hours uh, in a number of fantastic exhibitions in uh, the Ars Electronica Festival and the Ars Electronica Center, where really all of the pieces, um, I think, often explore this question of how we can um, unpeel AI very much like an, an onion, as uh, for example the piece Anatomy of an AI System does, uh, that you can also see in the exhibition just around the corner. So, um, wrapping up now. <laughs> Thanks to everybody for having us today. Um, yeah, I think we are super happy to be here and to hear everybody share about their programs. Thank you. <laughs>
AI should be uh, for a better uh, future. So technologies must be socially and environmentally responsible. Traceability and stability are essential elements of any AI technologies. Fundamental rights cannot be limited by AI. Technologies that not, cannot be explained or via methods that are not reproductible. Teams that develop AI technologies should be transdisciplinary, integrating techno-scientific and humanistic, humanistic knowledge. And finally, the development of any AI technologies must adhere to a deontological code of social responsibility for professionals and companies that respect the previous points. Um, so it was a workshop with um, thinkers and, and, and artists and technologists and philosophers that give us that declaration uh, that is available on the internet and I think it's a very straightforward way of getting into AI and ethics. Um, nope. <laughs> okay. Um, well, that, that was a video of uh, the first residence, uh, Monica Ricic. Uh, she's uh, from Barcelona, but uh, Serbian origins. Uh, she's an artist that works with uh, uh, robotics, always in a playful way, and uh, that, that's her with her piece at the exhibition. This is the second residency with, uh, uh, by two artists, Sofia Crespo and uh, Felica McCormick. He comes from Denmark and she's from Argentina, but they are based in Germany. And uh, this is one of the artists we share works with, uh, with um, Onassis, for instance. Uh, they created a, a, um, an imaginary, uh, a world imagined by, by I, and then we, we, our work was to put that uh, ideas into the physical Rome uh, with uh, 3D printing, uh, and they also have uh, tested um, biomaterials for 3D printing and, and things like that during the residency, but all those remotely. The resident was Aratia Capedi. She's an artist where, uh, based in New York. She works at the Parsons Schools, um, and she worked uh, with a very specific database. The, 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 the piece was created using all Goya's, Francisco de Goya's uh, sketchings collection, so that constitute the, the, the set where she, she trained the, the algorithm using that and produced a, a, a series of engravings and it was very interesting way of working because we saw that the uh, work of Goya really had a, a resonance with this uh, algorithmic aesthetics, uh, dreamy and, 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 and you, you, you could feel uh, because Goya is from Zaragoza, everyone in getting in the exhibition room really, really so, oh, that's Goya, and then when you get closer, of course, this is completely abstract. But that was a really nice touch, and people really, uh, well, it's, I mean, if you see it, it's not, it's not a, a figurative piece at all, but, uh, but kind of the, the essence is there, and that was very interesting, and also it was a piece that, uh, at least for us, was very easy uh, with the public because they, 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 they could say things straight away from it. Uh, that's the um, uh, artist of the exhibition, the entire uh, artist um, that uh, we, we have shared because uh, there are uh, not that many, many artists doing things with AI. So um, uh, they, the uh, artworks like, for instance, Patrick Tresse uh, that you have on, on the background is also being with us. Um, for uh, this exhibition uh, uh, with another uh, series, but it's been uh, also there. And that it, you see uh, the installation, how Patrick Tresse was on the, on the uh, Utopia, and, and also in the first, uh, you can see Arati's work. That is Anna Ridla, which uh, um, uh, is another piece. She's been also, I don't know how many exhibitions, Anna. Uh, Maybe we should raise the hand how many <laughs> places she's been. Um, but she was presenting a piece that she had created in 2020 thanks to a, a grant of Google. Uh, she, she made a film uh, with AI. And uh, the, the fact that she got that grant from Google allowed her to use this huge computational power. The, 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 the issue with AI, uh, one of the things that we see in the declaration is the amount of energy it uses for training those algorithms. And now we are <laughs> going into a very important energetical crisis. This is something uh, it, it is important to, to bear in mind. Those things are not 
carbon neutral and 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 well and uh, put that uh, in perspective with uh, just in uh, explaining to, to to just train a six minute film the amount of energy that you need to use etc so that is also uh, a thing to bear in mind there's more exuances of the exhibition here you have in the background Libby Heaney which is a very interesting uh, UK based artist that she works with quantum computing and and also feminism and and, and she in the background she created a deep fake uh, that uh, she's um, put her face into Elvis all movies and vice versa then uh, shoot uh, faces with Elvis and it is an interrogation of the questions of gender and, and presumptions about about who is who and it's very interesting work and then also you have Mario Klingemann uh, based in Munich is also one of the pioneers working with uh, a particular strain of artificial intelligence with this uh, deep um, you know, networks, uh, which it seems that is the only AI that exists, but actually there are many others. But uh, Mario was one of the pioneers because it's a technique that has been uh, hugely successful, uh, but only exists since 2014. Uh, but art is really adopted very early, and now we are seeing uh, a lot of uh, artworks using that technique of uh, generative adversarial networks, and Mario is one of the pioneers. As there was another video, but it's a PDF, so sorry. <laughs> There's more videos of the workshop created with Monica uh, uh, because we have a, a very comprehensive educational program. Um, uh, that's the second exhibition, which is Imagine Architectures of Professor Simon Colton. He's a professor at the University of London, and he created a series of uh, our, um, imagined buildings, and uh, we, we just uh, did a, an exhibition in the media facade of Utopia. That also was a video, uh, more videos <laughs> that can be played. And that was the uh, final Saragossa Garden. And I, I think I've run enough, so you can, uh, please, can we, um, yes, that will be just put in the third, the third uh, link will be enough. The third link, which is the first video. No, 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 not this one, the, the third one, please. Yeah. As much as I this is a quick um, video of the exhibition uh, at Utopia. I wouldn't mind, perhaps, um, so the subtitles and the is in Spanish, but there's no much dialogue. <laughs> they tried to do something with the television, tried to do something that was funny. It was just trying to have this very complicated exhibition explained by a child. Uh, at some point, it was successful. At some points, not so much. Uh, but um, it's good television. La visión es lo mismo que la mirada. Una, una concha. Porque tiene como bordes raros. Esta es una tortuga. Ah, no. Una concha también. Dos caballitos en el mar. Porque hay una cara y otra. were generated using different te techniques of AI. This one is a, it's a simple generative process, but it's a live video um, blight uh, generation by Ian Goldstone. Uh, those, this is the most photographic and cinematographic piece, so they really spend a lot of time filming that one. <laughs> it's a bit feel jealous for the other artists because that was just the one that was taking all the attention. Um, Sophia and Feilicken. That one too, my, from Mario. Una persona. Esto mosquito. 
Estamos explorando el espacio latente. Esto se inspira en cómo trabaja nuestro cerebro para conseguir una imagen. Ya se parece más. Está hablando la cosa. That was the machine that wanted to be uncompatible the, from Monica Ritchick. Uh, it's a very uh, funny piece uh, that uh, gets upset because she, she, she wants to be something, what, what humans want it to be something that she cannot be. And she has like an existential crisis and when everyone gets close to it, they start shouting and, and her breath accelerates. And it, it, it's um, interesting the way that people react to it because we just the movement of, of the breathing as a soft robot, uh, people start putting lots of things into it. That is Patrick. Perhaps we can stop it here, really, the video. We can stop it here. And perhaps one minute, and I saw the, col the colon is the summer camp, and so they can see Utopia a bit, it's one minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or no, or, or, we will not have time, yeah. it's just a, a minute video, yeah. yeah. So can we see uh, um, the last video, please, the last link, please? This is our summer school for um, children. We have uh, it every year, and for uh, the third year uh, in a row, we have some several workshops uh, inspired or about AI. We have children uh, over summer for about seven weeks, and this year we had like ten different itineraries, mean, meaning different types of workshop. We have a. Uh, photography, digital art, uh, cinema, um, uh, automatic cars, uh, astronomy, um, and yeah. So um, every uh, for the last three years, at least uh, three of the itineraries were were about AI uh, for kids from six to fourteen. That's it. So I think we all got, and you got a fantastic insight into the activities we realized and we also are going to realize in the next month and years together. Um, there is not so much left to say besides really inviting you, uh, either if you're online or here on site, just to get in touch with us, um, to maybe also um, get in touch with us to explore some possibilities, to get engaged in the programs, to work with us, um, to also see how we um, are developing uh, as a um, partner a consortium. Um, so definitely online. Um, and also here on site within the next uh, hours. We will jump into the next programs uh, with a performance program in 10 minutes. Um, and this will be then also followed by uh, a panel discussion on AI and art. So uh, please join us uh, again for um, the outcomes, the artistic outcomes of the European Artificial Intelligence Lab and also then uh, some deeper discussions on uh, artificial intelligence and art. Thank you so much.
Okay, you, this will be just a short introduction, so if you don't feel like sitting, it's quite okay. <laughs> Uh, my name is Jelena Joksimovic, uh, and I'm part of a Binema team. Uh, who, this team was led and gathered by Marko Milic, choreographer. Uh, in the team, there were also two IT scientists, Jelena Slivka and Nikola Luboric. And uh, there were me, me and my colleague, uh, Daniela Vucicevic, which are science communicators. Um, not only us, but five more uh, performers and dancers were involved. And our main research question was how can we imagine or how can we explore artificial intelligence that is wise or anti artificial intelligence that is humanized. Uh, this is a part of a long-term study that Marco started many years ago and invited us just to join him in this, last, uh, in this current uh, aspect of his journey. But, um, what we try to do actually is maybe best described by one scene from the movie uh, The Social Dilemma. You probably saw it. I see nodding, yeah. Uh, so where the three ghost-like figures uh, who are uh, representing uh, Facebook algorithms are deciding about uh, one boy's life by giving him push notifications and specific themes. But there is a one moment in the end of the movie when uh, these three ghost-like figures become one and that one figure steps out of the platform, steps down uh, from the platform and uh, approaches this boy and says hello. Like a very human-like hello. Uh, this is where we want our performance to start. There are five performers here in the, performers here in the space. With each of them, you can start a conversation starting with hello or whatever you like. But we kindly ask you to explore your interaction with them and your interaction with aspects of artificial intelligence. One of them will be specially um, uh, prepared to talk about and to represent eco chambers and filter bubbles. One of them will be there to hug and embrace your narcissism. <laughs> He's called Selfie. One of them uh, will be there to monitor every step you take, like monitoring systems, every explicit and implicit uh, ratings that you give. Uh, her name is Panopticon. Uh, you have also two not so popular or not existing, but we imagine them, two um, aspects of this future we hope artificial wisdom, who are going to be there as a more humanized version, versions. So first of, first of them is called G-Spot. Yeah, it's meant to feel like it sounds. Uh, with him, you can talk and see how incognito mode or VPN or these systems where nobody, or at least we hope so, nobody or less uh, monitoring systems are there and no, you are not visible. So who are you in the incognito mode is a question for this performer. And the last one, very important one, one that we completely, almost completely try to envision as a mental experiment of, uh, of uh, um, uh, artificial wisdom is Wabbit Hall. So with her, uh, something that is really, really deep, human and maybe neglected in you will try to uh, appear and in these interactions, we hope that many binemas will occur. So, hello. <laughs> After you find them and talk to them, we will gather all in the space, uh, this joint space behind, one, one stage there. They will try to recreate with their bodies everything that they find out and everything that moved them from the interactions with you. So like in half an hour or something, we join there, but before that, please explore.
Thank you.
is deserving the biggest applause here. So please, just, just now, welcome Marko Milic. Marko Milic is our choreographer and dancer, and he's the creator of the Binema project and the whole Binema program here. Of course, with, uh, with some members of, of your team and uh, dancers. And unfortunately, the scientific part uh, wasn't able to join us this evening. They are working at the Faculty of Technical Sciences in Novi Sad, and actually they have to teach, <laughs> so they have classes currently. But Marco, this isn't really for the very first time that you are somehow developing your work in the similar context, but currently we are actually in the museum, which is somehow exploring and presenting and elaborating our heritage in science and technology. And now you're coming with your performance, which you're actually dealing with something quite contemporary, something quite advancing, something which can be labeled as a key enabling technology of nowadays. So how are you feeling? What's the uh, response, not only of this audience, but of this whole place and this heritage and the things which can be seen and actually experienced here? So thank you, Lala, and thank you, everybody uh, who were uh, participating in the, in the work. I just, uh, I'm super happy to see so many different bodies and experiences happening in a, in a periphery of a museum. And I was just eardropping to some super bizarre and beautiful conversations. And I really love to see bodies and contemporary dance in scientific context. And it was quite, uh, for me, beautiful to see uh, how Binemas were developing what they were collecting in a space. So it was super cool to see, yeah. So this was like a second performance. First we had at the, at the opening event. So can you already announce, uh, are there some further binemas? And can you somehow conclude what would be your further steps in, in this regard? I mean, I would love to see how this could work in a longer term. Like we just had a few months of work. So usually binema is a long term uh, work and it started in two, uh, 2019. So I would like to see how it will continue uh, with uh, these performers uh, in uh, different also institutions of uh, who are targeting science. So that would be really interesting to see. Okay, let's then hear for some uh, other thoughts, ideas and experiences. Please join us at the uh, third AI Talks panel this day together with uh, speakers representing other uh, institutions and uh, other aspects of our project, both locally here in Serbia and also as part of uh, of uh, European project, European Artificial Intelligence Lab. So we just, uh, I will just uh, give a, a brief, uh, a brief an annou announcement, yeah? Uh, except uh, Marco, Marco Milis, the, the author of the Mbinem and choreographer. We have uh, this evening with us uh, Sunčica Pasuljevic Kandic, who is an uh, arti anti-disciplinary artist if I may label it that way, and uh, also a teacher at the faculty of, uh, at the Arts Academy of the University of Novi Sad, and also one of the co-authors of the Art Plus Science Plus uh, CPM production called Ivy, or AI Cross uh, VI, which was developed and presented last year through, uh, uh, within the framework of the uh, AI, Lab, uh, AI Lab project as well. Then our dear partner and colleague from the uh, Arts Electronica, Martin, Martin Hosnik, artist himself, but actually director of the festival Arts, Arts Electronica. And then another partner from, from our network, Lea Deschis, uh, representing uh, Exangon Grenoble. Lea is in charge of the Experimenta program and also on the art and science collaborations. My name is Dobri Velal Eric and I'm uh, a selector of uh, art and science edition here in Serbia. So Lea, if I may start with you since your institution is somehow recognized in Europe even beyond to this kind of per performative uh, activities and also those experimental uh, productions, experimental developments which are usually somehow trying to trigger different communities and also enable com com communication between, between, uh, between different, uh, different entities. So from your perspective, uh, would it be somehow, uh, can you find some uh, relations and some uh, maybe analogies between uh, Binema now and things we are doing here with the things that you are developing? Uh, uh, at the hexagon. Uh, what uh, I noticed is that there are kind of two trends. Uh, artists who wants to deal with the AI as a tool 
like integrating the technology in itself in their performances or their artistic work and other artists using AI more uh, as an inspiration to they they like to talk about AI it helps them to to write a text a story a narratives uh, about AI and I had the impression that what we saw tonight was exactly this I mean the performance we saw we're not integrating uh, the technology AI, but talking about AI. And we are, we, in the AIDA project, we mostly deal with artists integrating the tool, but Rocio, for example, at the end, couldn't integrate it AI as she would mm. like to, so it, it was kind of something fake. And, and now we're working with artists that exactly do the same, it's, it means, um, how do we uh, talk about this without using it as a tool in the technology? Yeah. And I think it brings over other questions and another relationship also to this technology and to ourselves because AI is kind of reflects also our humanity. So, but uh, is it possible somehow to translate this this notion and also this base of knowledge thing behind? Is it possible somehow to actively engage? audience not only because of artistic concepts and uh, some artistic so. aspects but having also in mind this background which is based in technology systems behind yeah. all algorithms codes i think so because um even more maybe because you you're not bringing a technology they don't know to to use and to manipulate but you you ask them to be part of what you're uh, offering them so they have to engage themselves to understand what is happening or, and I mean, maybe it's the best way to touch the emotion of somebody, not just only be a passive uh, visitor, but like being active in your experience. So, yeah. well, for us here at the CPN, actually, this uh, learning experiment, the, the whole learning process behind is maybe focal crucial because of our specific position. Now, I will jump to 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 Sunchica because last year you were part of an uh, of our own productions, collaborations between really diverse group of people representing quite many different domains and it's, it is about this Ivy production and it also has some performative elements meaning it uh, it addresses our movement in the in the public space clearly but it's also based on some uh, uh, learning techniques and learning elements behind so for you as an as an artist how it was difficult maybe to collaborate with different kind of uh, creators for it, uh, different expertises behind and uh, can you maybe share some uh, specific experience from, from this production? Yes, of course. Um, for me it was honestly really challenging. Um, so I was part of the Ivy team, it was five of us. I was uh, one of the artists, there was another visual artist, Isidora, um, and I'm not gonna like maybe name them all, but uh, basically we were visual artists um, directors in fr coming from drama arts and also andragogy. So basically the science part was actually uh, humanitarian science. So it's not the, uh, the kind of like a normal computer science uh, technical support that was in our team. And it was very challenging to probe into their minds the way how they perceive artificial intelligence. When we came together, we realized that all of us share completely different points of view and perspectives of thinking about what artificial intelligence is. And so unlike your work, we decided that we don't want to try and translate it or represent what AI is. We want to try and um, approach this to anyone else who are also struggling to understand what AI is. Because I kind of getting into the AI for at least five years now, especially into the materiality of technology. So all the intertwined things behind the AI. So when you say AI, I, how many of you think of Terminator? Can you, like, seriously? I think it's more of you, but you don't want to share, maybe. If not, it's a great group of people. But basically, whenever you say AI, it's Terminator kind of sci-fi movies and super intelligence but it's not really, and it's not that abstract. It's actually a system, translated system of data that tries to communicate through you, which is kind of something that you were trying to do, at least, I'm, I don't want to assume, but um, I would like to hear your thoughts on your work. Uh, our work was really not about translating things, but really trying to engage people 
to seek their own knowledge of what artificial intelligence is. And uh, honestly, uh, it maybe sounds so great, but it was a seven month work. It's definitely not enough time to pick the brains of people around you in your team, because we also got to work during the COVID times, working digitally. So imagine trying to meet the people to understand their logic, to understand their profession, how they think, how they work through digital means. And then you realize how challenging it is to actually make a joint work because we didn't uh, join uh, based on someone else's idea. The idea came us discussing. So we discussed about the idea for at least two or three months. We draft the idea and then we realized that what we want to do is to actually create this moment, and this is what IV represents. AI translates to V, which is uh, translated into Serbian Verstačka Inteligencija, but it also means V, like, sorry, you. So AI is you. Everyone who creates AI, because it's all of us, as a consumers, as someone coming from political, governmental um, background, we are all intertwined and creating AI and kind of consuming it at the same time. So idea was to actually take them on a tour performatively through Belgrade to explore through Belgrade all these moments where they don't really perceive artificial intelligence being there, but it actually is. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end, especially from this perspective, one year after the, the whole research process, did you succeed in establishing some sort of common language within the team and uh, how you're feeling this kind of collaboration? Um, would it prove like a successful one in this case or would you go for more maybe? I think that um, we managed somehow to find some sort of shared interest. For example, I did find shared interest with a couple of people and I would like to continue the collaboration definitely and actually we are thinking of continuing in different ways but I think in terms of uh, how we started all of it, um, the methodology of us getting to know each other, I think it requires a bit of more help from Center of Promotion of Science. Like the, I think you really tried to probe into the art and science collaboration, but you're coming from science mm -hmm. and you're not coming from arts. And I think the idea of collaboration, um, there's no joint recipe of what collaboration is. So everyone thinks of collaboration differently. Mm -hmm not just coming from science or coming from arts. Anyone thinks of what collaboration is different. And it's not equal to cooperation, which I think somehow, um, as I perceive it as a participant, was mostly to, your goal was mostly towards cooperation, not really collaboration. Mm -hmm. Us meeting, we decided that we really want to try and collaborate, like share the idea. When I say collaborate, because this is my, what I do and research, what it means to collaborate in terms of arts or whatever with anyone and try to communicate. This is how I try to figure out my work and practice. So I approached the colleagues with this notion, like what does it mean for you to collaborate? How can we establish this? So we tried our idea to try to think about what it means to collaborate. And then we started to think about the AI. Mm -hmm. And then we realized that AI is about collaboration. Because right now, when you think about who, who creates AI, honestly, can you say that it's a cooperation like Facebook or it's Mark Zuckerberg? Do you place it on the individual or do you place it on a corporation or do you place it on the government? It's very hard to distinguish. But basically, whenever you create a system like this, it's about co collaboration, not cooperation. And usually now it's about cooperation. And I think in order to think more about the well-being of everyone, planetary scale, not human-centric kind of AI, which is kind of like a buzzword also now, mm -hmm. I think we need to think about not dividing AI, uh, uh, sorry, art-science collaboration, mm -hmm. but collaboration. Because That's in this it. word, there is still, we are still dividing art and science mm -hmm. or technology, and we should not do that. Well, let's then go to a place which is, if I may say that, the place where actually those bridges have been made now for, for, for decades even, and it's a place where you're, Martin, trying to establish common languages with such a diversity, not only in regard of art and sciences, but also of cultures and uh, histories, traditions, uh, different perspectives all over the globe. So people are now coming for decades to, to Linz to explore your festival and to somehow try to take this, this sentiment away, but you, who is in charge of the festival, how difficult or how 
uh, how inspirational it is to start each year again and try to bring something new and to respond adequately to the uh, current barriers and ob obvious needs. Well, uh, compared to, to what you just said, making a festival on this topic, it's, it's not difficult at all. Uh, because, you know, it, you start something and after five days it's done. <laughs> but you were using collaboration, uh, cooperation, and these are things that, that have uh, one thing in common. This is this, is, this momentum that is not a mo it's, uh, the sustainability. It's the long-term thing. It's this that, that you cannot break time, that you need to grow something slowly. Um, but second part, inspiring, it's a festival is here to inspire um, and to trigger, to push. Um, if, if one would come saying, hey, okay, this festival uh, um, is here and its duty is to, to, to change the entire world, then I would say, you fool. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, we are a starting point and a triggering point. Um, and we are uh, actually a stage that has established itself um, uh, where every year people are coming together from all over the world that uh, do have the questions in common, in common um, but they all come from different situations, life situations, geopolitical situations, cultural situations, and they share, uh, so to speak, their vision, um, which, is, which should be a global vision. Um, and the inspiring moment there is, 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 is endless, I would say. Um, us, and it's not my festival, it's our festival, um, who, who are working there, uh, we are all hybrids in, 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 in being very talented in managing things, but also totally um, addicted to, to the topics that, and, and interested to the topics that we have in front of us. And uh, the lucky thing we are uh, in is that we always have it to do with cutting edge technologies. Um, so we always have this toe uh, in the past future, as I was joking uh, with Mihar today, who sadly is not joining us. Um, and that, that means that we are always there where the big shifts are required uh, or the big shifts are standing there as the huge challenges. AI is um, one topic that Ars Electronica has been focusing on uh, since I think 2018. Is, was it 2018? There we saw this technology uh, coming above us um, and before we dedicated, so to speak, our entire mission to that technologies that would influence us. But there it, 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 it became quickly clear that this technology would like um, be a, a new kind of layer, a new umbrella. At that time, um, it was a lousy, lousy harvest, to be honest, which was not lousy. Uh, uh, that way. The quality of the festival was that we saw artists approaching a world, or let's say, uh, getting in touch with a new technology. Mm -hmm. um, and parallel, the world did the same. I mean, unbelievable privilege that uh, you are a compañero, so to speak, with something that, that is currently growing or that is, that is set into life and that will uh, guide us um, yeah, for generations, I would say. Um, and if you see this evolution, and you, you said it before, uh, it was, before it was finger exercises. Um, artist's talent is that, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other side, there was nothing more substantial there. And uh, a colleague of us said, still today there are barely uh, um, art, there are artists who, who in a real good quality reflect this. Uh, this uh, there, there are not, not too many out there, but it's a, it's, a growing, it's a growing thing. But again, back to your question, um, it is massively inspiring. Um, and um, but you should be aware what a festival is for. Mm -hmm. But you're also relying on generations behind and decades of the existence of Ars Electronica and everything what it represents nowadays and what it was in the in the past. Here it's our only sixth edition so so far of our Plus Science program, and sometimes we really don't know how to position ourselves and. Uh, regarding media attention on the, some even scientific community, artistic community, like Sunchitsa also emphasized, we are always labeled either belonging more to sciences or to arts, and we don't want to actually to belong, we want to establish something new, something relevant, something from our perspective is important in this current time, in, in the third decade of 21st century. Are you still facing some kind of uh, preconceptions and misunderstanding and while presenting your ideas and uh, moving 
moving boundaries, literally. Yeah, permanently, I would say. I also don't agree, for instance, with what you said there before. I mean, not that I want to. Not, not, not that I want to fight your opinion. <laughs> that I, um, for sure, you are totally right that uh, AI or that art and science sh um, should be seen as, as, uh, uh, as something being part of some of a holistic concept of a bigger image, which is the fact. But isn't it also the fact that uh, this, that um, the controversy or the decisions that we are doing are, are, are based on uh, controversial uh, opinions so that we all benefit from different, from different mindsets uh, and also for sure from dis different disciplines. So um, we all know that historically, I mean, it all started in one faculty. Yeah? I mean, it was this uh, uh, one study. Um, but I think that the artist's role in that uh, is, is uh, m multiple um, and the artists um, what, this is also a trend that we see are, 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 are tending to get out of their, out, out of their artistic world to, to, to participate there where, where um, yeah, the, the huge challenges are set for the entire society. And, and uh, to implement artists there in these prototypical moments where we, where, where, we, where we set something into life mm -hmm. um, could take over a much more imminent role in that, a principal role in our society because what we all over the place, all over the planet lack like is, the, is, is, is the ethic in, 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 in our uh, motion forward. Mm. Um, but there are many, many, many uh, um, uh, complexities in that and there is not one opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And which we need probably the most nowadays, the kind of ethics and ethical story behind it. Something you wanted to... I, wanted to I need to like elaborate my point of view because I do really believe that in diversity in the different kinds of perceptions about AI or whatever, it's actually the point of collaboration. So I didn't want to say that it has to merge, but I think it's, uh, um, I'm interested in semantics. When you say art and science, you kind of already mm -hmm. make a distinction. Yeah. distinction. Mm -hmm. When you say artificial intelligence or you say complex information processing, you think about different things. Mm -hmm. But basically artificial intelligence is complex information processing but you don't perceive, associate meanings the same. And I think it applies also the same with the collaboration. We definitely can extract something different from artists, something different from technicians or from scientists. But in order to do that, we have to stop dividing them so much, put them in a group together. I think we share the same opinion, but maybe I kind of uh, phrase it a bit differently. But that's the thing, you have the need to call it. Why do we, <laughs> we really constantly have the need to call certain things and because categorize of, them? Because of the collaboration? <laughs> Not really, because the AI is about categorization. Mm. I love the quote of Kate Crawford when she says that really the AI is not smart and it's not intelligent. And I really do kind of follow her point of view and she really puts that greatly in her newest book and all of her research that she's doing. But she's really right. We're constantly thinking about the intelligence or intelligent processing, but all about this kind of form of artificial intelligence, about human percep perception of categorizing things. And we categorize things through language. And AI is something that combines every one of us, and meaning it combines different cultures. I think in, when you shared your questions, you mentioned something about diversity. How do we approach and think about diverse groups? Mm -hmm. And this relates to the ethical approach of the AI. How do you approach ethically differently to different cultures? Mm -hmm. Is it really possible? Mm -hmm. Because AI functions as a system that unifies everyone. Mm -hmm. Is it really possible to keep all the diversities with this kind of system that categorizes things? Mm -hmm. And you know, we have certain ethics. And we can maybe go into certain lengths, which I would not agree, to go to the certain lengths that Balkan ethics is different than, I don't know, Western or Eastern ethics is different. But there are some cultural differences. How do you combine all of that mm -hmm. into one tool? To th because this tool is created through categories. I think it's a very contradictory thing, but it's a very interesting field to research. And in order to research that, we do need to have different professions gathering around sharing their points of view, but also respecting different points of view. For me, in collaboration, you need to respect different points of view, to be in the position where you don't know everything. 
and you should never know everything and you should always question yourself through the position of perspective of someone else. Yeah. Th this is how I the, 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 uh, the well, word is different. No, no, between collaboration and cooperation. Yeah. So. But from this perspective, we can conclude that uh, AI is democratic in its essence because it's treating like equally sure. everyone, but its usage and application are changing that, I mean, that position. Everyone uh, here from your partners shared uh, Joy Bolandini work about Algorithmic Justice League, and she's a quite good reason of saying that AI is not democratic at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's quite flawed, really, really full of errors, which is a good thing to exploit these errors. But it also points out that we need to, in order to create a kind of like good AI, if we can even call it like that, or universally humanistic AI, humanistic AI thinking yes. about well being, not just humans, but all planet, is that really possible if each and every one of us thinks mm. differently or works differently? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to position the perspective, I'm really trying to think about it. Is yeah. this possible? Is this also the direction that we all should go? Like, because there are a lot of issues of trying also to centralize the AI for certain cultures or certain nations, right? We're well, seeing this war between US and China as well in, in this terms. So it's a lot of interesting field to think. Well, in, uh, just quickly, I mean, uh, uh, back to this aspect that I raised, uh, um, um, that, that we were so privileged to, 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 to accompany, so to see a process of a technology and, and, and the society and this dialogue. Um, at the beginning, it was really to understand what technology is mm -hmm. and, and uh, the phenomenon, uh, and this is what I'm struggling a little bit still, is that we put it in counterbalance on eye to eye with us, with our intelligence. So it was an entire festival break in a lens. Mm -hmm. Uh, about uh, actually what humankind is, yeah. who we are, and not about the technology itself. And, and now we have a small group, but an, uh, a, a, a high qualified group of, of professional artists who are, not art, who are not doing art and science, they are doing art as science. <laughs> and, and they have become a little bit closer, I would say. <laughs> Um, and those are artists who are, who are um, in the scientific field. They avoid to conceptualize, like uh, we have a, a, a big field of, very, of modern art who, mm -hmm. who in its conception is able to come over physical borders uh, uh, and to link things that are actually abstract in its constel mm -hmm. constellation. Mm -hmm. I am talking from artists who are acting, uh, who are deep in the field of the scientific areas. Uh, today we heard of Spela Petric, for instance. She doesn't need to abstract. Mm -hmm. She is aware of what the artists, uh, what the scientists are doing, what the field is on, and she can really there where scientific key research, or let's say where scientists are really working in their cutting edge world, she can measure whether uh, there is a lack of ethics or not. So, I mean, and this is what Ars Electronica tries, so to speak, to promote, mm -hmm. um, and has been trying to promote the entire time. Those who are not staying in their, uh, on, on, on their sides um, um, and looking to the other. Those who go the risk and, and are changing the sides and, 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 and uh, diving into this kind of technology. And the other aspect is um, this, chauvinistic, this chauvinistic quality humankind has that we invent one technology and that we tend to um, um, change all the old technologies with these new technologies. I mean, there is the quality of humankind embedded, but it's also the disaster where we always end up. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and, and the wisdom that the technology, uh, the wisdom, it's a, again a paradigm, the wisdom that the technology could help us to um, help us to answer the question where the hell we want technology and what for we want technology is also something that I would love to ask uh, a, a, a well-trained AI. Um, because this is really where we always end up in the same patterns. We are doing as over generations as humans the same mistakes again. And, uh, and, and I really deeply hope that um, one would come and position this technology not um, on the other side of humans so that we end up in discussing what the hell is, this, uh, is intelligence or not. So, so where we understand where our limits of intelligence are mm -hmm. to position the technology there to, to help us to simulate, so to speak, uh, better what is in what disasters we would drive us as, a, as, as humanity uh, in the close or in the far future. And, and there I think um, uh, to discuss AI there 
and uh, there are many, many samples already out there um, that, 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 that are the positive samples, I would uh -huh. say, uh -huh. and uh, it was two years before, three years before, not the case. Uh, there you could easily go into a school class without explaining the algorithm and the technolo technological background. We say, hey, there is a technology that could help us, so to speak, to understand better when some obstacle from orbit is coming and in 5,000 years uh, we, we are going to collide. So the, the AI could help us to kind of identify those things. At the end, we need to, we need to come up with the solutions, which is another problem of humanity. Well, maybe intentionally not, you tackled one critical aspect of this whole process, which is how to involve more people into the research, which is creating new technologies, and what's the story behind. And I want now to discuss a bit positions about different learning or training or empowering methodologies and possibilities, not only for artists, but it's also important to maybe empower scientists in order to accept different positions, to, to, to respect different views and different practices. So, Marco, coming back to you, uh, for creating this binema, actually, it was a strange time. Again, it was partly uh, this COVID time, but you had a chance to work for a couple of months with uh, uh, AI research team based at the University of Novi Sad, quite young, enthusiastic, and open at the end mm -hmm. research yeah. team who actually was awarded by Serbia National Science Fund for their initial uh, investigation on very specific aspects of AI. And somehow you, ha you had a chance to get into their system, to understand maybe better their, their, their routine, their practices, their activities, but they are trying to, to develop, to establish, to, to perform in this project. Mm -hmm. But also there is somehow uh, this opposite side or collaborative side, however we can, we, can, we can see at this position, who are also eager to learn more about this process. And uh, for this uh, initial presentation of BNEMA, the opening event actually, they were with us and they also joined the performance. They were part of, of this whole process. So they didn't just uh, stand outside. Mm. They really physically joined and they also uh, took some roles in this process. So can you share maybe some experiences from, from this project? Yeah, I can just tell you that it was like learning a little bit a new language in a way because both Nicola and Jelena who were artistic, no, scientific mentors for Binema, uh, it was just trying to get where we have a common uh, ground. It, it took a while to realize what, what it means. So I agree that there is a little um, th there is a question how to, how to work together from different disciplines on something that is a little bit new. So there is no recipe and stuff like, like uh, you mentioned. Um, but at the same time, I, f for me, it felt a bit like learning uh, language to try to understand how, when we say something, what it means. Because it's quite different for, I think, uh, two of them. And w when we talk about scientific component, they know it really well and I do not have a knowledge about it so that was uh, like a slow process but what I loved about this work was something that uh, we were talking at the very beginning when you mentioned that uh, it is about process there was kind of emphasis on that which was really relaxing in a way to get um, to get that vibe even if it's okay if it's coming from institutions sometimes when uh, uh, institutions say like uh, yeah, just it's a process. Go for it. It's just like it could mean many different things. But here, I really felt it's very genuine thing. Like okay, so get together and try things out, which is quite for, for me. It's very really remarkable. I, I enjoyed it a lot. So yeah, it, I, I have a feeling that time is a big uh, part of it. Like how much time it takes. Usually these things. That's why I, I like to think of it as a longer, longer um, work that it will take years and years because. The more time to get it, the more this language is uh, shaped, and uh, this is something I would looking forward uh, in the future. How to find this mutual language? It doesn't even if it's so different, like where we can find a common points. I'm, I'm that one standing for the for the for the process. I I like this this perspective, but just uh, actually, it isn't your first encounter of this kind of, of structure. Mm -hmm. You did that something similar, but in the normal times, which is also a very important factor, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And you did it at the Bosch headquarters in Germany. Yeah. You were part of, of their residency program. 
Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, but actually, in, in initially, the name was conceived in a way. Yeah, completely. Yeah, so, but it's uh, yeah, it's um, 2019. There was a collaboration between Academy Schloss Solitude and uh, Bosch. So there, uh, they developed um, together with two artists. They develop a platform at the kind of top floor of the building in Bosch. So they decided to give three months for different artistic projects. Um, so, yeah, initial idea is that um, there is something called uh, disruptive innovation, which there is a tendency for companies, I think, to, to think about it. Ah, so if we really want something that is disruptive, that could change the course of the future, how we can make it, in a way? So there were some smart people, I think, who, uh, who said, okay, so maybe we can make a space which could be like a, some sort of hovering space, you know, on the top floor where we can invite artists and scientists working together, but with no goal that it could happen. So this is really beautiful. So there is no need for this disruptive innovation to, to come, which is really also something on these terms, a process like uh, process based work. So this was, this was a different setting because it's a lab. It's a multi lab facility where people work together. So it was just exciting to try to see how contemporary dance could fit in uh, research. Even Binema started there as an idea, a storytelling idea, how AI could uh, have its own interests, what she wants to do, how she wants to organize her life, which is having short lifespan. So it, it was a bit storytelling, like in a very scientific uh, yeah, environment, which was nice to, nice yeah. to try. It was also about how to translate this message and also how to transcend this, this notion through different means. For me, was tra translation is the issue that I hear a lot. I'm, for me, translation is not uh, the component of it. It's more opening up ideas so we can try to see where we are. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't have a skill to translate something so complex, but yeah. more yeah, to see what will come up as a as a stimulation or interest from, our, from each one of uh, them, because for scientists it's different, for me it's different, for also employees over there it's different. So, yeah. Yeah. The different experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Leah, I'm coming now, now to you. I would ask you to repeat what, what, what you probably said twice at least today, but I was really impressed by your uh, training program that you, that, that, that you developed uh, despite all challenges and uh, all closures and, uh, and restrictions. Still, you, you've been able through AI Lab somehow to bring people together and to empower uh, professionals you are working with. Um, so, yes, you're talking about the guess, what we call guess. It's, um, in French, it's like coup artistique d'exploration scientifique. <laughs> and in, the, in English, it would be artistic group for scientific exploration. So the idea was to create, to imagine training programs for artists. So because we're always thinking also uh, um, uh, to the audience and, uh, and what artists can, what message they can deliver to the audience. But uh, the question was like, okay, we're gonna focus on the artists and, uh, and what are they, they need, they need they need uh, scientific knowledge. So how, how can we bring to them th this knowledge? Uh, so we organize those training programs, so three to two sessions of three days. We gathered about 10 artists. Uh, they were participating uh, to both sessions and 10 uh, researchers. Um, so uh, they were not the same, the first session and the second session because we didn't make them uh, in the same city. Uh, but the scientific really wanted to be there also during the whole session, like the three days, and not just being invited to give a talk, uh, transmit their knowledge, and they go. They w really wanted also to have, um, to, to, they also expected from the artists to bring them questions and uh, new perspectives, and they really wanted to exchange this. And this was our fault because at the beginning we were like, okay, we're focusing on the artists only, and we're using the, yes? And also scientists using artists, because you mentioned it's, it's artists a, need scientists. Yes. Why do we think that scientists do not need artists but, but or someone else? That's, that's exactly my point. <laughs> that's great. And that's why I said it was our thought at the beginning to be centered on the artist. And scientists came back to us and say, but I would like to be here the whole time because I also need 
those point of views and critics and remarks and stuff. So we decided now that it's also very important to have the scientific group the whole time and to create, to create a real balanced group. And this has worked very well. And we noticed that at the end, artists wanted to continue working with them and scientific also came back say, I would like to work with this artist too. So in this way, it was successful because we had also no artistic expectations. So we didn't ask the artist, okay, you will participate to this training program, but please uh, do a little performance at the end. No, not at all. It was like just Proce take the process. Emphasizing. They're also exactly emphasizing so the that. process. And they were really happy about this. But at the end we were, okay, so we're giving you uh, this knowledge, but it's also good to, to give the financial means. So that's why we launched after those sessions an open call to give the opportunity to those artists and scientists or others to produce mm -hmm. uh, a short performance. But, and we will continue with those training programs because art, artists were super ent enthusiastic, scientific also. Everybody is asking for new sessions, so we're gonna continue. It was focused on AI, but we might focus on other technologies mm -hmm. or, of course. or scientific research. Yeah. So, so yeah, th this was successful, so we will try to continue. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm just coming to, to you, actually, <laughs> because you're here very... No? You are, yeah, you are, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> no, but you are, but you are wearing many hats here. We, we, we need to emphasize that, and we are all, all belonging to different kind of positions, perspectives, institutions, uh, and and uh, and uh, and uh, and the structures behind. So you're also working, so to say, at the, at the Arts Academy. So you're working now for a while with with students, and you are aware of needs of young artists, those coming generations, uh, when they want to deal with such a uh, specific. Uh, historics and, and complex topics and then you have your own practices but you also of course have to take care of, uh, of, uh, of their wishes uh, at, at the end so based on our discussion of course you can you can uh, you can comment uh, uh, Lea's position and what they did at the, at the hexagon in Grenoble what would be uh, somehow recommendable for the perspective of a, an art faculty regarding those kind of empowerment processes or, or, or maybe is it somehow possible also to bring scientists uh, into your premises? Yeah, I cannot say about recommendable because I'm really questioning a position of art education. Like I really want to probe into it, experiment and maybe like even hack it. Because how can you educate someone about art if from my position you think about art as something that belongs to each and every one of us? So how can I actually even teach it to someone else if they are the ones who have to find their own way to navigate it? There are no specific rules. If at least in my mind you define art as I like to see it from the devil's dictionary, it's the only word that defies any definition. So, and I love really this kind of definition of no definition. So uh, I would not say that there is any kind of like recommendation. I can only speak from my experience what I try to do. Um, I try to bring different knowledges and professions to my students. Coming, people coming from linguistics, people coming from music, people coming from science, to give talks, lectures, or just talk with them. And I try to discuss with them different uh, subjects that are not related to the art, especially working uh, on the, the digital arts um, subject. We don't really talk about art much. We talk about position of humans uh, in, within society through technology and around planet and we try to figure out the language and then they had to figure out their way how they will express this and it's very hard for them to do because it's very hard for them to think about uh, research such as for example Baden's research it's really far away from their mind so I'm recently really trying to think about how do we actually approach them with this complex research how do we find the language what uh, Milan actually mentioned in the way how he expressed that he was trying to find a way of mutual language with all the people that he tried to collaborate with. And I think this is very important. How do we collaborate? Mm -hmm. What, how do we communicate this? And I noticed everyone's presentations today and how you also mentioned your collaborations. I never saw any name of any scientist, anyone from technical support. I only see organizations. And I think also mentioning about 
sustainability and support, there, there should never be just one name. Like, this is all, again, about the trying to make differences. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I'm really interested to hear your experience of collaborating with different organizations and people. Like, how, how was it to actually collaborate with them? Like, how was for your institutions to figure out for so many years working in this sector, what did you figure out that it's actually about collaboration, like the challenges of collaborating? Because for me, that's, that's a really, really tricky thing. Like, you're organizing all these many events, festivals, gathering uh, artists. How do you gather artists? Do you invite them? Do you put an open call? How do you try to place them uh, I think Peter mentioned that you were trying to, this is also our, my experience of being a participant last year, you're trying to pair us with some scientists. How do you decide? Who decides? How do we manage to collaborate finally? I think it requires, like Mark said, a lot of time. This is a really big process and it takes a lot of time to constantly rethink it. And I think you, you, all of your partners shared so many different presentations, but my question was all the time like, how do you all think about collaboration? Like you're all talking about we collaborate with scientists, we collaborate with scientists, I feel it as a buzzword. Like what are the different experiences that are happening for you as an artist, for you as an organizer, for you coming from science, you coming from arts, performing arts, it's a very different notion of how you navigate your ways. Do you share it in your consortium? Do you share these challenges? Like do they go outside? to other people, like I would really love to, to kind of read or get to know more about all of these like methods maybe that you figure out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, One, just a second, actually a year, and a, a year and a half ago Christina told me, Christina from Ars Electronica told me, don't call him, <laughs> don't call him, someone. And I tried, and he never responded after three, four, five emails, so we need to listen to our partners and uh, and uh, base themselves on, on their experiences. But well, I don't want to reg uh, start regretting what, 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 what happened before, but um, uh, um, I sit here in full swing and with full confidence that what you heard that morning was in so far important because, you know, uh, what uh, all these institutions uh, uh, did there is in so far groundbreaking that we are stepping in on, on, uh, on, on thin ice in, into a new area. Um, and we don't want, I mean, our anecdotes of the day are full of stories where people meet uh, uh, and they, they re reflect this, artists and scientists. These are the anecdotes, but here on this stage, it is about providing these protagonists that we want to bridge, that we want to bring together a space that is actually very rather neutral where they can, without any boundaries, uh, uh, shyness, uh, can make their mistakes and learn what, for the sake of the individual, the quality of a collaboration or a cooperation might be or should be. And that's why uh, we are an institution, we, we are stressing in the last years that we are not even an institution, we are a platform. And our responsibility is simply, um, for sure, personally, to value what is going on in the room, what was their interaction. But uh, uh, our main responsibility is to create these spaces, imaginary spaces for sure, and real spaces, where these happenings can take place in a protected, let's say, it, way, because it's still a young plant to grow, so to speak. This is what I try to do with a group of my students, it's maybe 20 students. What I maybe wasn't clear is that how is this visible to anyone else? You know, we have a certain way of communicating our work. You know, we use the presentations, we did this with this many numbers, but these things that now that you explain that are great, like how do they actually get back to the other? Um, again, an institutional free. Uh, an institution has the tools that we can get, that you can create some kind of a food chain. So I mean, it started uh, uh, with uh, with a project like that, mm -hmm. where we were investigating a field, a space, whether there is some valuable things to get out and to further develop. I can tell now, and also due to the pandemics, for sure, and and, and to this fact that uh, existentially we had to reinvent ourselves. Um, there was simply not a festival possible, but. We dedicated an entire museum 
an entire museum that is dedicated to the region, uh, to this topic. Mm -hmm. um, Vladan, your guy, you guys, uh, your approach, uh, but all the other, the ethical approach, the philosophical approach, the music samples, um, you get a real full hug uh, of experiencing what this AI thing is. Mm -hmm. And um, beyond this, um, and again now due to the pandemic, we are uh, offering online to schools, to unemployed, um, beyond our region now already, or we're starting now to kind of enter this market Vienna, mm -hmm. um, um, uh, young employees. Um, so we are spreading that and we are trying to tra digest, transform this onto a level where we have packages ready and sorry that I'm talking in this product style, but these packages are just packages because they are dedicated to the different interest groups mm -hmm. uh, in order to be able to kind of yeah, um, uh, uh, reach and address the most diversity that is possible. Uh, in its intention, I think this is, uh, might be an answer to your question. Yeah. Nevertheless, there it's working good, there you fail. Um, and it's also about uh, 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 those, uh, I mean, it's about the sender, but it's also about those who, 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 who receive the sendings. I mean, what they do with it, what they want to do with it. And I think this is important. Um, and, and it's highly didactical what we are doing out of this art thing. And we, and we are treated pretty hard by the art world that we are utilizing, abusing, so to speak, the arts for the sake of educating others and, and expl explaining things that are super complex in a simplified, Way. Yeah. Well, just, just to add in our case, and maybe, maybe you saw to, today also when, when Peter was presenting our position, that we're doing this tour across Serbia and visiting faculties, including yours, and presenting what we're doing and also inviting people to join us. And even here now, we don't have really a stage here. It's the common space, and uh, this is our community, and we're literally inviting people to, to work with, with us. And sometimes you have a list with those who somehow... Uh, got into touch and uh, asked if they can be invited to join some processes, some um, some 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 programs, and the, actually that's how some some people joined those selections that that, that, that you also pass uh, that, that you were also belonging to. But uh, going further to one of the productions of this exactly this this very context, this kind of selection, we have a work dealing with. Uh, with the uh, destiny of Danube, called Vudiana Oracle, is about making a forecast of, of Danube, and uh, except Lea, in this case, actually, we are all belonging to this uh, Danube axis from Belgrade to Novi Sad, and then further west to, to, to Linz, and uh, we, can, we can share this kind of sentiment, so we can add Gr Grenoble to that list as well, and uh, speaking about oracles, I don't know if you're believing uh, or, or not in uh, those, and if you tried your luck with, uh, with Vudiana, here, but what would be your, your perspective, maybe, maybe Levi, I can start with you. In this case, what, what we need as a, as a society now, now in Europe, and uh, no matter how we would label this kind of collaborations and bringing people to, together and working together, what would be actually possible to achieve at the end, and uh, what is needed, where is the, what's the domain when you, need, when you feel that so, so, so some kind of intervention is needed? I think, I don't know if it's, I wouldn't say it's needed, but I think it should be uh, more natural to cross disciplines and we should stop, as you said, to categorize uh, things, uh, fields, language also, people, and uh, cross more all those disciplines and it will be more interesting for everybody, even at class. I mean, you have mathematics, French, arts, music, but we should also let uh, professors work together and Im imagine new formats. And uh, this would be for sure, or will allow a better understanding also of, uh, of society and how the world works and to create a language which reflects, reflects better who we are because we do not have the same vocabulary um, and not using the same words to express something. But, okay, so that was for, for your question. But, and I think you're completely right when you said, uh, why didn't you speak about, uh, why didn't you name 
uh, the scientists uh, participating in this and maybe it's a bias we have because we're talking to each other um, between cultural centers or institutions so we're focused again on artists but for example and I'm thinking about my position when uh, I'm in a consortium about a horizon project so on the research side I would say so this department of the research center named by blah 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 are working with artists so I changed completely my, my point of view. But you're right, and I shouldn't say with artists, but with those artists. So I, I, will, I, I will be careful about this now in the future. And I think she's right. So it's a clear takeaway of our <laughs> yeah, <exactly. Thank laughs> discussion you. today. Okay. And Martin, since you're probably the most aware of all global trends and things happening across the globe, what's emerging on the horizon, what we can expect in coming years. Oh, come on, how, I'm not, how uh, to uh, I'm, I, I just, uh, if everything I would, I could, I, I could tell you something, <laughs> but it would have no value, you know. I just can say that the institution that I represent um, is, so to speak, uh, the, the victim of its own mission <laughs> uh, since 79, and uh, we will keep on following this mission, and this mission brings us always to this point where you guys appear and asking <laughs> us these questions. <laughs> It is not us uh, defining these trends. It is us representing a global species we call the media artists mm -hmm. um, who tell us what the trends are, who they are the trend barometer because what we see is the tools that they are using and how they are, how they are using them and for what sake, for, the, for, for, how, yeah, for what reason they are using them uh, on the one side or how they critically, so to speak, uh, um, are, re are reflecting uh, the technology um, as the technology itself. And this is what we will keep on uh, doing, uh, that is for sure. Um, and, but one thing I can promise is that uh, this little piece of artificial intelligence will keep on guiding us. Mm. And that's why um, the didactic at Ars Electronica, that's why it is about finding methods of uh, 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 we have to foster, so to speak, uh, um, the, 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 the general will to collaborate and we have to offer methods to cooperate. Um, and this is, uh, this is, I think, our duty. And um, this is also the trend that we see that single artists, <laughs> individuals, um, um, let's say global citizens as well as scientists, are, they are all tending to get out of their lives because they see that uh, the, the challenges on the horizon are only solvable if we're doing that, uh, if we unite, uh, Together, if we yeah. collaborate and find ways to cooperate. Yeah. This is our mission. Yeah, so solidarity. And the um, yeah, if you ask me, yes. In For sure. Okay. Then going further south on Danube to Novi Sad. <laughs> What would be your perspective based actually on, on all those experiences and, 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 and things you are working on uh, currently and uh, that we are planning to work together in the future also and yes, developing yes. now? What do you think? And also having in mind this specific, really specific and, uh, and, and important role that you are working with directly with young generations, that you are educating and empowering them. This panel is probably so many questions <laughs> <laughs> that I just want to figure out. Just now. Uh, and there are so many things that I want to connect. What you said, what you said, like, oh. Uh, trying to answer the last one, like how to approach the young generations, because at the end they are the ones like getting into the scene and everything. And I think uh, it's in the young generations that are gonna create the scene. But I sometimes think that it's also an illusion. Like you also mentioned that Ars Electronica is not an institution that puts trends. You're trying to figure out um, with everyone what the trend can be, but honestly, that's also an illusion of thinking. I mean, maybe it's your intention, but when you, coming from someone as an individual artist, when you have in your reference exhibiting at Ars Electronica, it means different when you try to exhibit <laughs> in your own country. So I, I totally understand what you tried to say, that it, maybe it's not your intention, but sometimes our intentions... It turns out no, something else. In the art world, we are making trends, if we want or not, but we, our role is to contribute to the entire society, and there it is not our role to create trends. It is just the artists that we give the stage and the window, and they might 
costs of and course. trends. Yeah. And these are the complex system that we are all working on. Some, you, you cannot avoid this, like, because it's not your responsibility, you, it's out of your control. It will be the art, small institutions that will create this. So how do we think about the young artists? Well, my point is to ed not to educate them. I, I, I think it's a strong word that when you use educate. I try to transfer my experience, but also probe them to think differently from the position of their own experience. So I try to give them everything that I know that it's mapped on the scene to figure out, th so they can figure out their own place. What is their place in this scene? Who they have? So let's not think about arts electronica, but because they're coming from Novi Sad, and it's already a big, like a border of the arts in between Novi Sad and Belgrade. So we try to kind of like bridge this. Okay, there is Center for Promotion of Science that you can address. There is someone somewhere out there other parts of Serbia that you can also address before thinking about going or reaching Ars Electronica or somewhere else. Th this thing, how do you engage young people? It's a, it's a learning process. Like I, I'm constantly trying to figure out my way with them because every year I get a different generation. With one generation I can talk and discuss things beautifully and they're like their minds are engaged in so many different levels. The other it's like not so much. Like they don't really think about impact of technology. And it's interesting to hear this, like how they don't really think about the impact of technology. Like they scroll through their pages and they're like immersed in their Instagram and TikTok. And I learn from them so much. I learn how they actually engage with technology. It's a very small difference between me and them, like 10 to 15 years. But it's a very different way of thinking or engaging with technology. And it just gives me a lot more um, thoughts to process about where technology might lead us. Like you said, you want to think about where it might go, which is great, but there are so many people who are not even perceiving this. Like I think that when we, we think that everyone is thinking about this, but not, not really. We just like accept technology as it is and we just go with it. So I'm, my idea of what I want to do is try to engage with students not to think about it like that for starters, and then see where it goes. I'm not sure if I answered your question at all, sorry. <laughs> well, fortunately, we had some students today. <laughs> <laughs> we had some students from the arts faculties today with us, so we'll see if that influenced them in any way. But scaling that down and coming further, Marco, you're actually just standing as an individual and independent artist in a way, so you're not belonging to any kind of institution and uh, you're working on your own, on your idea, on your own agenda. It, what? No, but it, it's also, um, uh, at least in in, uh, in Belgrade, independent scene. It's uh, it's a tricky thing. It it means uh, collaboration with institutions as well. It's just not so much inside of institutions like maybe you're working, but it's yeah, kind of more flexible. But like now, I'm I'm collaborating with you, so it's <laughs> it's. Independent. Independently, <laughs> as an individual, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. So it's a, it's a flexible position that that's for sure. But uh, and from that very specific uh, position, what would you what would you say? What would be maybe some your personal interest in this regard, in this field, but also in in your community with uh, your colleagues, uh, other artists? Are those topics important at all? Relevant? Are there those similar questions raised? There was something that came up from from this work, uh, which is connected to uh, artificial intelligence, and it's a little bit how it's very easy to polarize, uh, like to have a polarized society with uh, algor algorithms working on that quite kind of subconsciously almost, but also very directly. So this for me was very interesting. Like, is there? So I would really love to engage uh, in the future. Is there a mean to? Uh, depolarize it, so how we can bring some sort of uh, like outside bubbles in our own bubble, which is a little bit a talk about collaboration. So that would be quite cool to think for the next work uh, to see is there a chance to kind of spread a little bit this echo chamber of mine with some new, not new, it's more like a just like an influence that I didn't pay attention to. Because I have a feeling that especially now, um, if you are listening to certain kind of sources, 
you can sit calmly here and talk and like we are really cool now, but then just shift to another frequency of information and you will run from here screaming, thinking the world is going to, you know, to end this moment or there is a war coming or this, this, this thing. So it's very tricky. And then what I believe and what you believe, it's, uh, there is a story behind it. So I would, I, would I would be interested to work on that to see how this could happen, maybe also with the help of uh, artificial intelligence. Would, would they be a mean to open this bubble up? That would be cool. Yeah, well, one of those Binema characters was actually echoing uh, yeah, Echo was, yeah, yeah. she voices. was echoing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's somehow your standpoint. Okay, thank you really for your time, for your uh, inputs and uh, sharing your, your thoughts and ideas and experiences. I don't know if you have any, any question from the, not that large audience anymore, but maybe from the online audience, if you have any, any comment or question there. Hmm? Do we? Not, not. Maybe? Uh huh. I will. I will repeat that. So, the importance of the science promotion is it like for for me or for <laughs> our guests? Uh, science promotion through online media, but I mean not institutional in general. How to maybe promote science or whether it is. Uh, uh, at least adequate to use these kind of tools for science promotion as such, or to do it on a much more uh, substantial level. I think that promotion comes after when you create a certain environment of self-criticality. Mm -hmm. So we, every time we speak about promotion and visibility of art or science or whatever, but so I feel like in thinking about how to promote things, we neglect are we actually creating an environment that actually is existing here? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I have people who work, because I come from new media department at Novi Sad, mm -hmm. and recently now we have also new media department in Belgrade. And I'm constantly thinking for m about 10 years now, is there a me new media scene in Serbia? Mm -hmm. Is there actually an environment, because my students constantly ask me that, where they can continue. I ask myself as a student that, and ever since I finished my studies, I tried to kind of create an environment as an individual. Not, I'm trying also that through an NGO, through an institution, and it's very hard. Really, it takes a lot of years, a lot of effort, different connections. So before thinking about promoting it, because this was also my thinking when I started to work in an NGO related to art, science, and technology, and this is when I actually understood what new media art practices is, what autonomy behind artificial intelligence is, I realized we're constantly thinking about promoting things, but not actually really creating an environment. And what makes, what are the methods to create this environment? Mm -hmm. And how much patience and time it actually requires yeah, for it. Exactly so, so maybe the question back is like, is there actually, do you feel like there is an environment to be promoted strongly? or you still, still feel that there needs to be more time to kind of create this environment to help it at least become sustainable. For example, this project that you're now having, like, is, is there any chance that it becomes sustainable? Well, like Martin just said, it is about failures and successes, so mm -hmm. not all stories are successful and it's not necessary that even Serbia as a country needs this kind of environment. That's maybe just uh, our assumption, but maybe yeah. it's irrelevant here. Who knows? I also think you're totally right. But just, I mean, excluding all the, uh, um, how it comes to promotion and from that point that it makes sense to promote, just simply looking at promotion, look the hell what's going to, what, what is promoted out there. From toothpasta to so, I mean, why not promoting a little bit what you guys are doing or what we guys are doing? <laughs> um, no doubt, I mean, to answer this question, for sure, we need more, uh, I mean, science, uh, um, I don't know who is sitting here inside, but I had an interview today. Um, um, that isn't it, and uh, there was this question, isn't it sad that uh, in times of the 21st century where we have so much of science promotion, where we have so many, so many achievements in science, that all of a sudden we have a, a public discussion that, uh, that, 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 that our society is divided in two parties, the ones who want to get vaccinated and the other ones who think that 
I mean, this is a very good sample that what you guys are doing requires much more, let's say, intelligent, better promotion, not what you guys are doing because you are the best practice sample. <laughs> but uh, I'm totally depressed of this fact that uh, we are living in a time where we are currently living, us in our bulb, we are not understanding that others are reacting like they, they do, but they're getting closer, then you start to understand it. But, you know, the achievements, our, our entire society is, is based on these achievements of science and we have to break a lens that we don't stop uh, investing money in that because it is the key to, let, to, to, to sustain here on this planet or the key to decide to early enough jump off this planet, to leave, what to leave I don't it, yeah. think is, what I hope is not the option. Well, planet will survive. It's, the question is only about us. Yeah. <laughs> okay, saying that. If we, do we have anything else on our YouTube? I think our colleagues in... Uh, do we have any, any other comments? No? Do you want to ask us something? No? Then I just have to thank you once again for your time and, and efforts. And thank you also for joining us in Belgrade. And thank you for your work with us. Thank you, guys.